In today's video, we're going to be creating gun animations for our gun that we have here inside of Roblox Studio. We're going to be creating an idle animation and a reload animation. I'm going to show you guys how you can create your own animations with a gun so that way you can create any other animation you could ever think of. Just so that you guys have a base understanding of what you're going to need, I have these four simple parts right here. Really, all that you need is a handle. This is simply four just basic Roblox parts right here. I have a body right here, which is just kind of this upper part right here. I have the slide up here, which is the part that will slide back and forth whenever a bullet gets shot. I have a magazine inside of my handle right here, which is really just another part. And then the handle itself is just simply this part right here. So you're gonna want some parts like that. Really, the only part that you're gonna want that's animatable is going to be the magazine, really. However, you can also make the slide animatable, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So first off, we need to click on our handle right here, and we can just duplicate this and rename it to main. Because this is going to be our main part, which all the other parts are kind of connected to. From there, we can just rename the transparency of our main part right here all the way up to 1, so that way it's completely transparent and is invisible. And then from here, we need to group all of these parts together. So you can select all of these parts, press Ctrl and G, or right click and press on group as a model. What this is going to do, it's going to group all of our parts into this model right here, and that is perfect. For now, we can just rename this model to pistol or whatever gun you have. If you have an assault rifle, you can feel free to do that or a shotgun or any other gun. Now, after that, you're going to need a plugin called Constraint Editor, which you can find down in the description below. It's completely free, so you don't have to worry about that. Just feel free to download that and then come back to this video. But after that, let's open up our Constraint Editor right here. It should be a list of tools. And then from there, you can click on our main part and then click on any part that you want to be animatable. In this case, the only other part that I want to be animatable is the magazine, and in fact, I'll also include the slide. So these are the parts that are actually going to be movable inside of our animation. After that, just click on your tools drop down menu right here, and then click on new Motor 6D. If you haven't watched my Motor 6D tutorial yet, you can watch it in the top right corner of this video. I would recommend finishing this tutorial and then go and watch that one for a much deeper understanding. But all that you need to know is that Motor 6D is sort of like a mechanical joint that you're going to be using to hold all of our parts together, especially for animation. So let's click on New Motor 6D, and you should see Magazine has a Motor 6D and Slide has a Motor 6D. Those are the two parts that we had selected, so that is perfect. After that, we're going to click on Main again, and then we need to go through and select all the parts that we don't want to be animatable. This is going to be the handle and the body for me. These parts don't need to move around at all, and so we don't need to animate them, which means we can just click on this drop down menu and click on new weld. What this is going to do is going to create two new welds for our two different parts right here. So now overall you should have four different things inside of your part if you had four total parts other than your main part. There should be one of these items in here for every single part that you have except for your main part. And if you don't, then please make sure that you go ahead and redo this step correctly. But that is all we need to do, and this is what we call rigging our gun, pretty much. Or welding our parts together. After that, we need to go up to the Avatar tab right up here, and then click on the Rig Builder. It doesn't really matter what rig type you do, either R15 or R6, but it depends on what you want your game to be like. If you want your characters to be R6, then you're going to want to choose an R6 rig. However, if you want your characters to be R15, then you can choose an R15 rig. For me personally, I'm going to choose an R15 rig type and I'm going to go for the block avatar. I'm also going to position this rig just right here and turn them around real quick. And then we can grab our pistol and drag and drop it inside of our rig. The next thing that we need to do is we need to connect our pistol to our rig. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use a Motor 6D inside of a part for our rig right here. And you need to find out which one you're going to want to weld the pistol to. If you want to rig the pistol to the player's right hand, then that will make sure that the pistol is welded to the right hand and it will move along with the player's right hand. You can also choose to weld the pistol to the player's upper torso right here, which means that you'll have much more control over where the gun goes, which is perfect for certain animations such as examining your weapon or any cool tricks that you want to do with your weapon, such as a revolver where you probably sling it around your fingers a few times. But if you're not going to be doing any of those, you can just do your right hand. For me, I'm personally going to weld this pistol to my upper torso. 
However, you can choose your right hand, your left hand, really any other part inside of your rig. So choose the part that you want to weld your pistol to. In this case, mine is the upper torso. Yours could be the right hand or the left hand. It doesn't really matter overall. For the upper torso, I'm going to click on the plus icon and insert a motor 6D. When you click on the motor 6D, it should add in a motor 6D inside of your upper torso or your part that you chose. And then all we need to do inside of the properties, change part zero to our upper torso and then part one needs to be the main part inside of our pistol. Now notice that as soon as we do this, our pistol is going to be inside of our rig. Now if your pistol is not inside of your rig, Make sure that none of your parts in your tool were anchored at all, and also make sure that all of your parts were properly rigged and welded together. Anyways, now we have everything connected together, we can go up to our avatar tab and then click on the animation editor and then click on our rig right here and create our own animation. From here you'll want to click on this plus icon right here and then click on add all of body. What this is going to do is going to add in all of our body parts right here. You're going to want to find your main part right here. You can press R to swap between the move and rotate tools inside the animation editor and then you can move your pistol around wherever you would like to. You'll also notice you have full control over the different parts that had the motor 60s inside of it like the control and the magazine right here which I can eject if I want to. So here is where you can start animating. Once again if it was welded to your right hand you will just have to move your right arm pretty much and that's going to be everything you need to do for your pistol but since I welded my pistol to my upper torso so it's going to need a little bit more work simply because it needs to be moved manually. This is my idle animation for the pistol. If you'd like to add a ton of keyframes, you can make it look as good as possible, but I'm just going to have these simple keyframes right here. And want to make sure that looping is enabled by pressing this little looping button right here. And you'll see this is our looping animation. After that, we'll want to click on these three dots right here and set the animation priority to action because we want a high priority for our animation so that way it overrides our tool animation that's already there for Roblox. After that, let's click on the three dots right here and then click on publish to Roblox. And it's gonna ask us to name our animation. So I'm gonna name this idle gun animation. And I say this in every animation tutorial, but for the creator, if you are the one creating the game and you are the one that owns the game, then setting the creator to me is perfectly fine. But say your friend made the game, then you'll want him to publish the animation, otherwise the animation isn't going to load for both of you, or any other player that joins your game for that matter. Next, if you're creating a game inside of a group, you'll want to publish the animation with the creator as the group instead of me. And if you don't do that correctly, then your animation isn't going to load for any other player other than yourself, which is not good whatsoever for a public game. Let's go ahead and click on save once you have your animation all configured here. It's going to load and it's going to say that we can copy the ID by pressing this button right here. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this will copy the ID for our animation. Now let's click on close. Let's go right up here. I'm going to insert a brand new folder into workspace right here. I'm going to call it animations just so we can hold on to our animations for now. now. I'm going to click on the plus icon. I'm going to add in an animation and this animation I'm going to rename to idle and the animation ID I'm going to paste inside of the animation ID property. After that, we can go right back to our animation editor right here and now we can create a reloading animation. Alrighty, so I just have this very simple reload animation right here. It's not anything fancy at all, but it gets the job done and that is perfect. This animation does not need to be looping because it's just going to be a one-time thing that the player will do for their gun. However, we will need to go ahead and keep the animation priority on action. After that, let's click on publish to Roblox. And let's go ahead and rename this one to reload gun animation. And once again, the same rules with the creator apply. Let's click on save real quick and then make sure we copy the ID. After that, we can close this window. Go up to our animations folder and duplicate the idle animation inside of that and then we can rename it to reload. From there we can paste our animation ID inside of our animation ID property for our reload animation. After that we no longer have a use for our animation editor so we can close this. After that we can go ahead and grab our pistol from our rig right here. And then we can go ahead and delete our rig as we no longer have a need for it. After that, inside of workspace, let's click on a plus icon right here and insert a tool. 
This tool we're going to rename to pistol like this. And then inside of the properties, we can turn off requires handle. We can grab our pistol model right here and drag and drop it inside of our pistol tool. And then we can right click and press ungroup for our pistol model right here. And this will automatically put all of our parts inside of our pistol. We can drag and drop our animations folder inside of our pistol tool as well. And let's also insert a local script. Inside this local script, I'm just going to start off here by declaring a comment for our services. We're going to need to use user input service to detect when the player presses R, so that way we can play our animation for our reloading. So we're going to say local user input service will be equal to game colon get service user input service. Now user input service is the service that we use to go ahead and detect user input. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're also going to go ahead and get the player's service, which will be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks players. And this player service is this player service that you see right here inside of the Explorer. You'll see it's responsible for holding all of the different players inside of our game. After that, let's go down a little bit. I'm going to declare another comment for our variables instead of our services. And I'm going to say local player will be equal to players dot local player. After that, we're going to get our tool which will be equal to script.parent. Now, players.localPlayer, this is simply the player that joins the game, and it's the individual player that this pistol will be for. An example would be, say you join a Roblox game, and everybody in the game has a computer. Your computer would be this script, pretty much, and so we can say player will be equal to players.localPlayer, and this would get you as that local player, if that makes sense. The tool is simply the tool instance that our script is inside of, which is our pistol tool right here. And then we need to get our animations folder, which will be equal to script.parent.animations. Let's drop down a few lines and declare our functions variable. I mean comment, just to keep everything nice and organized. And we're gonna say user input service dot input began connect function with parentheses on the end like this. And this is gonna take input as a parameter with a comma, and then game processed event as a parameter. The input is going to be whatever input was detected, whether that be a mouse click, a keyboard touch, maybe someone touching the screen on their iPad. And then the game processed event is going to return a boolean, which is a true or false value, depending on if a player is currently typing, whether that be inside of a text box like a code GUI, or that be typing in the chat. Either way, we don't want to have them reload whenever they type inside of the chat. So we're going to check if game processed event, then we're going to return end. We're not going to continue with the function. However, if input.keycode will be equal to enum.keycode.r, then we're also going to check if player.character colon find first child and this will be our tool then that's just going to basically make sure that our tool is equipped then we can say local animation track will be equal to player.character colon find first child humanoid with a capital h dot animator which is the thing responsible for loading the animations on our humanoid colon load animation with parentheses, and then this is going to be our animations dot reload animation. Let's press enter to drop down the line. We're gonna say animation track play. That's all we need to do for our reload function. So let's drop down a few lines after that and scroll down a little bit. And we're gonna say local idle animation track is going to be equal to player dot character find first child humanoid dot animator which once again is responsible for loading the animations on the humanoid, pull in load animation, parentheses, animations.idle. After that, we're going to say tool.equipped, colon, connect, function, and then idle animation track, play, parentheses. And we're also going to say tool.unequipped, connect function as well. We're going to say idle animation track, stop. This is going to stop our animation when the player unequips our tool, and it's going to play the animation whenever our player equips the tool. This is actually everything that we need to do for our local script, 
but unfortunately it's not going to work until we create a server script that's going to create a motor 6d inside of our player like we created when we had that one rig and what it's going to do it's going to connect the pistol to the player's rig pretty much so that way it can play the animations properly so let's go over to server script service right here click the plus icon and insert a script now with this script we're going to say game.players.playeradded connect function and it's going to take player as a parameter this is going to be the player that joins the game and it's going to run a function whenever that player does join the game after that we're going to say player.characteradded connect function and this is going to take character as the parameter. Now one thing you need to know is that the player and the character are two different instances. The player is what you see inside the player service. Take Rusty Silly Band as an example. This is where the backpack is held, the player scripts, and other sorts of values. Things like leader stats and other things that we have inside of the player. However, the character, this is the player's avatar. It's the thing that actually has health. It's the 3D model of the player inside of the workspace or our world. After that, we are just going to wait about a second. So we can say wait one second just to make sure everything loads properly. We're going to say local motor 6D is going to be equal to instance dot new parentheses quotation marks motor 6d motor 6d dot name is going to be equal to quotation marks tool attach and then motor 6d dot parent is going to be equal to character dot upper torso for me i rigged my rig with the upper torso as the main part that was rigged to my pistol. However, if you use the right hand instead of the upper torso or the left hand instead of the upper torso, you will need to replace this with right hand. However, I did the upper torso, so I'm going to keep mine with the upper torso. After that, we're going to say character.childAddedConnect function. So basically, whenever a player equips a tool, that tool gets added to the player's character and that's why it shows on their avatar. So whenever that tool gets added to our character, we're gonna connect a function. It's going to take the child that was added as a parameter. Then we're gonna check if that child that was added to our character, colon, is a tool, and the child that was added, find first child main, which is our main part. Then we're gonna say motor 6D, dot part one is going to be equal to child dot main which was our main part inside of our gun let's go ahead click on play and we can test it out so let's go ahead and pick up our gun right here and you'll notice that as soon as we pick it up it's going to play our idle animation alrighty so i made a simple mistake instead of saying if player dot character find first child tool we need to say if player dot character find first child tool dot name let's go ahead and click on play now and we'll be able to test it out so once again we equip our tool it's going to play our idle animation here and then if we press r it's going to play our reloading animation now this animation it looks a little weird simply because of my avatar i have tiny little legs and tiny little arms so it's not going to be very scaled to my user here but yeah you can see this is how we can create animations for our guns inside of roblox studio if you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as i did and it was helpful for you please make sure you like subscribe and comment down below it helps the channel out a ton and is completely free anyways i hope you have an absolutely amazing day